This is the Mormon Mixed Faith Marriage Podcast with Certified Life Coach Brooke Booth, episode number 140. Okay, I really like today's topic. <laughs> Some topics I really like. I really like today's topic. I'm gonna talk about apologizing and building trust. And the very first thing I wanna say about apologizing and building trust is that they are two distinct things. They are separate skills. They are, they are separate. A lot of people get them mixed up and they think an apology will rebuild trust. And as we'll talk about in this podcast, it does not. Okay. Let's say, and just for the sake of this podcast, that there is a hurt, hurtful behavior that has happened in your mixed faith marriage. You can insert whatever hurtful behavior you want to insert. Um, you've been dismissed or ignored or invalidated, microaggressions, microinvalidations, full-on trauma, whatever you want to say. There has been a hurt that's been sustained. Um, when there's hurt and pain and wrongdoing or neglect or rejection or betrayal or whatever, um, it hurts. It hurts. And I want to talk about how to work from that in the context of apologizing and building trust. First and foremost, please, please do apologize. I don't want to discount apologizing at all here. Um, apologizing is a great first step. Please do it. But no, it is only the first step. Please apologize. It's an important first step. It is a first step, but it is just that, a first step. Please take responsibility for the behavior that you did, the word you spoke, whatever. Please take responsibility. That's a great next step. It's a good second step, but again, only the second step. Because an apology or taking responsibility are important steps, but they are not going to rebuild trust or create safety again for your partner in your relationship. They are not sufficient in and of themselves. Trust is rebuilt differently. Trust and safety are created slowly over time as words and behaviors, actions are now becoming congruent. You have many, many conversations and then many, many interactions that reinforce those conversations. That's how trust and safety are built up. So I want to explore this concept with an example that I've seen um, as I've worked with clients. So I'm just going to call it spouse one and spouse two for purposes of this example. And as I walk through this example, see if you can relate, see if you've had an interaction similar to this, because I'm guessing you, there's a chance you have spouse one, um, has done something right to cause her or pain. There's been some sort of behavior that's they haven't been proud of, or that has been communicated to them was harmful or hurtful or something. Okay. Something was done. And again, in a mixed faith marriage, this can look like so many things. Look at all the examples I've shared on the podcast. You say, I wouldn't have married you. You ignore their input regarding tithing. You tell them that, you know, they're a bad parent on and on and on and on or that they're lazy or who knows what. So many things can do this, but it's, it's, it happens because we're humans. Okay. These things happen. So something spouse one does something. They're just not proud of their behavior. They see that their behavior has had a negative impact in the relationship. Something has happened. And so spouse one apologizes for that behavior. They, they fess up, they own up, they say, I'm sorry. Okay. Important first step. Great. Then sometimes this is what happens. Um, then uh, spouse two is working through processing their hurt and working through the impact of that on them. And um, they may bring up the pain that's associated with the behavior. And they may bring up, you know, multiple times even that this is still something they're working through, or this is still something that um, they're managing or processing. And then when they do that, spouse one may become upset because spouse two brought up their pain when they had already apologized. Spouse one would prefer spouse two to not bring it up 
because they've apologized and they'd like to move on and not have that brought up again and not have that be discussed. And this is where it's really important to see that apologizing is different than rebuilding trust and rebuilding safety in a relationship. Apologizing is different than processing pain and hurt and working through that. It's different. So I want to talk about this example. Note that spouse two is probably bringing it up, not to stick it to spouse one, not to penalize or punish spouse one, because it's still active in them, because they're still processing the pain because an apology does not equate to pain getting processed automatically. It does not create working through and rebuilding trust immediately. An apology is just a start. And so when we offer an apology and then we don't allow any space for our spouse to work through that pain with us or even at all, we shut that down. Um, we're not now creating an environment where trust and safety can be rebuilt. We're dismissing the impact of that on them and, and not offering the support they may need to work through what it is they're working through. Again, spouse two is probably bringing it up because they're still feeling feelings and they're still working through what they're working through. Um, and that's, an important thing for them to do. So let's revisit how this can be addressed in a more, in a way where trust and safety can be nurtured and developed. Because again, an apology is not the end. An apology is just the beginning. And when we treat it like the end, um, we're not creating an environment where safety and trust can flourish. So if spouse two, spouse one is apologized. They acknowledge what they've done wrong. Spouse one is apologized. Spouse two is like, hey, that hurt when, hey, I didn't like it when, hey, I'm still like smarting about when, or they bring it up in whatever way. I realize this is not easy. I think spouse one would like that to go away and never be revisited, probably because they have some shame and guilt about their own behavior. But again, this is not about them. This is about working together as a partnership to create safety and trust again. And what another way to deal with this is instead of dismissing them or discounting them or telling them that they shouldn't bring that up again, because you've already apologized, this can be a really great opportunity to build trust and safety. This can be a really great opportunity to use this time in this discussion to talk about and help your spouse work through and process what they're feeling, their pain, their hurt, their neglect, their sorrow. Help them work through it by talking about it, by getting validated about their feelings, by having space to feel what they feel without that being shut down or sped through or, or now you get triggered because you're ashamed instead of being able to hold space with them and let them feel what they feel. Now, when this approach is taken, this is a huge like step in the building trust and building safety direction. Now, this is a deposit in the trust bank account. This is a deposit in the safety bank account. When you're able to show up and let them have the space for their emotion without telling them they shouldn't feel that way anymore because you've apologized, but letting them work through what they need to work through, that is a significant way to build trust and safety in your relationship again. This is a hard skill. It's way easier to be like, I don't want to talk about that. I've already apologized. Why are you bringing that up? But it's important to recognize that an apology, <laughs> important first step, is not the same thing as rebuilding trust and safety. And in order to rebuild trust and safety, your partner need, may need to bring it up and talk about the pain and hurt or the frustrations they've had about your behavior or something you've said and done. Can you use that as an opportunity to rebuild trust 
and to let them do that and to give them the space to do that. I think one reason this is hard to do is because sometimes I think we look at this through the lens of repentance. And when we're taught about repentance, you know, I'm talking about like in church, um, the relationship we have with God is we do something wrong. Like our behavior is hurtful to God, right? And we go through the repentance process. There are certain steps we repent. And then that relationship is now fixed. That relationship is now okay again. And sometimes I think we forget that repentance doesn't work with our spouse. It's not the same as the relationship and how it works with God. God is different than our spouse, right? It doesn't work with people because people have hurts and pains and traumas and doubts and insecurities, and sometimes even wisdom to protect themselves. And sometimes they need to put in boundaries. They're people. They're not God. And that's okay that they're like that. But I think sometimes we'd really like the relationship to be like with God, where we repent and we go through some steps and then everything's okay again. And we can know that the relationship has been reestablished and is fine again. But again, it doesn't really work that way with other people. And so I, I, I think that's sometimes why we fall into the trap of like, hey, we don't need to talk about that ever again. Like I repented, we should be good again because that's how it works. Like that's how we're taught about repentance with God. And that's like how we've been taught it works with God, but it doesn't work that way with other people. They need time and space to work through what they're working through. And they need to be able to rebuild trust and rebuild safety. It just doesn't automatically happen because you've gone through the steps that we call repentance. So please, please, please apologize. Please, please, please take responsibility. And then ask yourself, okay, now what do I need to be doing to rebuild trust and to creating an environment of safety? What do I need to be doing to make my partner, you know, feel like it's good judgment to be vulnerable with me again? What do I need to be doing when they bring up their hurt and the pain over my own behavior? How do I want to respond to that? How do I want to be with them as they express that? How do I want to take that opportunity to rebuild trust and to rebuild safety? That's the question I want you to ask. And this is something you can ask for from your spouse too. You can make requests around this. If they want to not talk about something because they've already apologized, it might be helpful for you to point out, I appreciate your apology. I'm glad you've apologized. That means a lot to me, but I'm still working through some pain and hurt here. And they still need some time to work through that. It's a fair, fair request. If you're in a mixed faith marriage, I suspect there's hurt and pain. I suspect that you both want this relationship to work and there's been apologies and reparations made. And I want you to now think, okay, the next step beyond that is trust and safety, how to work on that, how to rebuild that. And I'll reiterate, I think one of the most powerful ways we work on that and rebuild that is to allow our spouse to work through and process through their frustrations and pains and hurts from our own behaviors and our own actions and our own words and letting them even do that with us. If that's something that needs to be done, letting them express their hurt and sorrow and frustration as often as they need to, so that they know they can bring up those things and that they can talk about those things. And this is a safe relationship for them to talk about those things. It's a really significant way trust and safety are rebuilt. This takes a great deal of emotional regulation skills to be able to listen to our spouse as they express pain and sorrow over something we've done. We have to be able to um, separate out our own emotional response to what they're saying and be able to hold space for them instead of devolve or spin off into our own emotional reaction to what they're saying. 
but it is something we can do. And it's a really important skill in this trust and safety building phase of a relationship. So if this is something you're working on, this is a lot, this is a classic skill I work on with clients, how to communicate around this, how to build up your own emotional regulation and emotional management so that you can be actively building trust and safety with your partner once again. As always, if you need help with this, I have a great course that you can do this in a self-guided, self-study manner. Go to brookboothcoaching.com and check it out. Wishing you the very best in your mixed faith marriage.